So look, um, I don't want to keep you here too long. Stay about for after the video um, to hear about everything. I'll give you more of an update, but look, just enjoy the video and we'll talk about that later, all right? Party full of skeletons successfully stole a merchant ship last session. A few players left, but those that remain are level 3 now. Miraculously, our skeletal bodies haven't been destroyed yet, despite our dysfunctional resurrection hijinks. Still trying to sail in the general direction that our necromancer has commanded us. Trying to find the necromancer to see why they resurrected us. Boat contains several PC skeletons, two NPC human teenagers, and four NPC cows that we convinced to join us in the first session. We searched the boat for anything useful. I find a crate full of backpacks and start throwing them at everyone. Was tired of carrying all my items stuffed in my ribcage. The rowdy skeleton finds a small alcove with fancy food in it and begins making sandwiches for the teenagers, wrapping them in cheesecloth for the journey. We realise the boat isn't moving at this point because no wind. Party looks around the ship, only find a small rowing oar for the lifeboat. Can't find any long oars, so I have to pass three strength checks to rip up a plank from the deck and use it as a makeshift oar. The agile skeleton, instead of helping me, reaches through the gap in the deck to pet the cow. Moo! Is here mooing below, curiously in the cargo hold. Sudden urge to let go of the plank and smash his bony arm in half. DM secretly goading me to do so, but I resist temptation. Both me and the agile skeleton finally pry this plank loose. Almost bounces off the boat from the tension coming free, and the agile skeleton is able to jump on it before it topples overboard. Crying, one of the NPC human teenagers finds a fishing pole. She hooks some weird ass yellow fish with tentacles and pulls it up onto the boat. The agile skeleton walks over and instinctively starts stabbing with a shank he made out of his own rib bones. It starts squealing and spitting yellow goo all over but comes to arrest. Some hours go by and the rowdy that was preparing the food decides fuck it, we'll try and clean the fish. As he is cleaning the fish it starts writhing and more tentacles start coming out. Gross, JPG. Boots it over the side of the ship. Don't hear a splash. Both me and the rowdy skeleton look over to the side of the boat. Baby Kraken fish tentacle hentai monster thing is stuck to the side of the boat via tentacles and climbing up the side of the boat. Sklorp, sklorp. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Keeps making a <laughs> sound as it slaps its sticky appendages to the gained ground. Fuck off. We rattled at it as me and the rowdy skeleton start swinging at it with our weapons. I whack it with my hammer, but it grabs onto my hammer and won't let go with its tentacles. Rowdy Skeleton starts swinging with his scythe he found below in a crate, but now it's grabbed onto both of our weapons while clinging onto the side of the boat. Getting our asses kicked by a monster the size of a loaf of bread, a tug of war ensues as we try to get our fucking weapons back. One of the other skeletons runs over and decides to chuck a flaming lantern at the baby kraken thing. Skeletal yeet dot wav. Lantern flies away off course and lands in the ocean with a plunk. Even the monster stares awkwardly with us. Skeleton panics and goes for another throw. Natural fucking one. Slams the lantern into the side of the boat. Flames lurch up around me and the other skeleton in melee combat with the little monster. God damn it, PC skeleton. You set my fancy hat on fire. I like that hat. Some mother gave it to the person that I stole it from. I shout angrily. Rowdy Skeleton's sun hat is now also quite burnt with a few flame licks here and there. The Kraken monster screeches at the sudden flames and withdraws slightly. Oh, so I guess this is my fault, huh? Asks the agile skeleton that set everything on fire. Both me and the rowdy skeleton rattle at him angrily. Through our bumbling manic combat style, we have found the monster's weakness. However, I use my free hand to grab one of the torches I had stuffed in my backpack for later. Light it from the flames on my own body and start whacking the monster like a fucking pinata. Every time the lit torch smacks the monster upside the fleshy bits, it screeches like a demon and tries desperately to take the torch away from me. Crying, the braver teenage NPC has been helping one of the other PC skeletons use buckets of water to keep the fire from spreading. Millie, the less brave teenage NPC, walks up on deck and sees two of her friendly skeleton bros on fire while rattling unintelligibly at something over the edge of the boat, which is also on fire out of her view. Homer Simpson slowly walking backwards and a shrub gif. She slowly shuts the door, leading back into the lower deck and goes down, where it's no longer complete skeletal chaos. Next four rounds are manic, flinging and swelling at this little cracking bastard, while half of us are on fire and the other half are trying to put out the fire. 
Agile Skeleton gets the bright idea to grab some lamp oil and chuck it down at the monster at the side of the boat. Poke the monster with my torch and it goes up in crackling flame. Finally lets go of our weapons and falls down to the water. Additionally, the fire is finally put out while Rowdy and I pat out the flames on our death clothes. Cryon splashes the Agile Skeleton with seawater and makes rude gestures at him for setting the boat on fire. They angrily charade at each other because I'm the only one with an amulet that can talk to human children. I quietly lament over the loss of my fancy hat. Put my armour back on because this night can only get better from here. Like 30 minutes later we start hearing clink, clink, clink on the right hand side of the boat. Agile Skelton, quite fed up with the entire night, saunters over and lurches a skull over the side of the boat. A boat with a metric fuck ton of gnolls are now trying to board our ship from their assault barge. I guess the fireballs may have tipped them off to our location. We're getting boarded! All of us but Millie run to the side of the boat. More grappling hooks land on the deck. Agile Skelton next to me decides to use the classic chuck a lit lantern at them technique we used against the Kraken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 A knoll on the boat rolls a high-ass dexterity check, catches the lantern and chucks it back at us. Agile Skelton Bro with through it rolls a high-ass dexterity check in return and catches it. Rattles angrily. He throws it back. Noel catches it again. Three turns of hot potato. <laughs> Three turns of hot potato and shoe between the skeleton and the knoll, repeatedly catching the lantern and throwing it at each other until finally the skeleton misses his throw and it lands in the water. Everyone kind of just stopped what they were doing to watch the impromptu lantern dodgeball game. A knoll is spotted changing currency with another knoll. Knolls begin to climb their boarding ropes. I start cutting off the grapples, sending knolls screaming into the water as they fall. One knoll misses the water and thumps off the side of the barge. No laughter heard from below. Another skeleton bro comes up and starts throwing lanterns at the Noel pirate boat too. I keep cutting grapples. Kyron comes over and watches two skeletons chucking lanterns at Noel's as they dodge out of the way. I use my magic amulet to talk to her. We could use some help. She runs off. Comes back with a bigger lantern. <laughs> right? Comes back with a bigger lantern and throws it off the boat at the Knolls with a cheerful get off my boat. Knolls are confused as fuck to see two skeletons and a teenage girl throwing lanterns at them as they're trying to board what they thought was a normal trading ship. There are so many they start making it onto the boat railings. I started chucking the grapples that I cut at the Knolls on the boat, doming one of them in the face with the spike end and hitting another through the knee. The boat is drastically low on lanterns at this point. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the boat is drastically low on lanterns at this point as we've thrown like 15 of them off the boat failing to get a single one to set the nose boat on fire. We've all converted to melee combat at this point. Noles have boarded the other side of the boat as well without us noticing. We hear a muffled noise of terror. Turn around to see Millie standing with her back to us and more noles lurching over the side of the boat. These ones are faster and dual wielding poorly made cutlasses. With no more lanterns to throw, one of the skeleton bros tries to persuade the gnolls to join us in our quest to find our necromancer, using a magic amulet to talk to them. He isn't proficient with the amulet, so the only thing the gnoll understands is, me dead? The gnolls are perturbed. The skeleton bro with a bone shank runs over to Millie and starts defending her as me and the other skeletons fight off the main bulk of the gnolls with Chiron. Chiron pulls out a big ass hunting knife and starts fucking up the gnolls one at a time. I pull out my fancy ass scythe that I got from the serial killer in session 1 and start one-shotting gnolls left and right, cutting them in half. When the gnolls try and block our attacks, their cutlasses almost bend in half from how poorly made they are. We notice now that Millie has a two-handed hammer she found below deck and is now helping to defend the boat. Crying goes all Wolverine's daughter from the movie Logan and jumps up on one of the gnolls, knocking him down and slashing him open with her big ass knife covering herself in blood. She is the second biggest DPS in the fight, just behind me at this point. We are doing remarkably better against a small navy of gnolls than we are against a single bread loaf sized baby kraken monster. Other skeleton that failed his intimidation check resorts to hand to hand combat with the gnoll that challenged him. Auspicious skeleton, the one of the cow friends, suplexes his fucking gnoll off the side of the boat and an audible crack is heard as it bounces off the battle barge below. More gnolls climbing on board the boat as we keep fighting them, despite attempts at cutting their grappling hooks. 
Cows are sleeping below deck and have been zero help this session. <laughs> I've killed so many gnolls at this point that the deck of the boat is now covered in blood and guts. Using my sick ass scythe that I previously stole from a serial killer after killing him with it. As I'm killing gnolls, the scythe starts talking to me telepathically. Yes, it says approvingly, as it's bathed in blood and chuckles. Even the necromancer is put off by it and says so to me in my skull. Well, this is interesting, but I don't have the time to process this new turn of events mid-battle. On the other side of the boat, Agile Skelton is cutting up gnolls with the daggers from his own rib bones as Millie begins smashing the gnolls with her big hammer. Gnolls are extremely pissed and attempt to attack her, and she takes some cuts in the process. Millie gets anger the more she gets cut and swings back at them, sinking her hammer into the rib cage of a knoll so deep it almost gets stuck. Crying is having so much fun killing gnolls that a few of them get scared seeing an insane teenage girl covered in blood carving up their friends with a knife the size of her arm and jump off the boat to flee. She jumps on the back of one and begins wildly stabbing at its neck and it screams in terror as it spins in circles trying to get her off before dying. She's quite chipper, despite everything. Auspicious skeleton grabs some knoll blood and spreads it across his white skull and manages to intimidate a few more gnolls into fleeing. They promptly hurdle themselves over the railing into the sea below. Five rounds later, gnolls are still boarding the boat, but we finally manage to either kill or scare away most of them. Scar? Scar. Scar. <laughs> scare? Yeah. We hear a roar from down below, as well as the screeches and calls of gnolls. Suddenly a huge wave of gnolls shakingly come back over the railings. Their poorly made cutlasses are shaking in their hands. A deep guttural voice from below says, Fine! If I have to do it, I'll do it myself. In a broken beast common tongue. One of the border ropes suddenly creaks hard against the wood and an audible strain of rope trying to hold a heavy weight. We see a huge knoll paw suddenly grip the side of the railing. We look over to see a huge knoll head with a patch made of human skin come up over the railing. And that's where we left off the night. So, um, before we get anywhere, if you want the next part, it should be uploaded with text to speech on Fred Flasher, a link to that. And also, this story is actually written by, I get it emailed into me, it is a fella, he's called Guard Blow Miniature Reviews. You should definitely go check him out. It's a dead on fella. He's been emailing me these stories, so he has, keeping me in the, you know, keeping me up to speed and whatnot. So definitely go ahead, check him out. It's dead on fella, I think it's pretty cool. But let's get into the meat of it. Um, if you guys don't want to hear any of it, just keep going. Um, go ahead, check the next part out. It's got text to speech. Give you that right now. I'll throw it up on screen here. Okay, um, so I sent a tweet to YouTube, so I did. I picked the monetization and didn't get got like a bit of a nothing response. I'll throw it up on screen here. Um, they didn't really explain anything at all, which is a bit shit. But I went through, was looking at the terms of service. Turns out text speech is actually against YouTube's terms of service. So. I'm thinking that must be it. Um, I'm hoping that everything I've done in this video complies with them. You know, I think, and I honestly think it's a better style anyway. And it was a lot of fun working with Megan. Um, you know, I thought it was pretty good. You know, and that was her first time leading it. So she was laughing quite a bit. So I decided to keep them bits in. But look, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's what we're going to be doing for the next wee while. Um, I'm going to be uploading the normal videos that I would be doing every day on Thread Thrasher, so please be sure to subscribe there. Uh, for the next while, I'm only going to be uploading one video a week on Neckberia in this style, and I want to keep doing it like this. I don't think text speech will be gone forever. Um, at the moment, I'm thinking I could do, like, you know, I'm only going to be able to do maybe, like, three videos a week in this style, um, because Megan doesn't really have the time, unless I can get, like, all our voice actors to come in and give us a hand, unless I could always do it myself from time to time. But look, um, that's neither here nor there. Um, I think like, you know, just as long as it's not all the time, I think you're in the good books with YouTube as far as they're concerned. So don't worry, it'll just be a bit of a hiatus on some of my longer videos. For instance, like um, the old Paladin party and stuff like that. It's just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just take a wee break. But don't worry, they will be coming back and I probably will be uploading them on Forget Thrasher, so be sure to check it out over there. I'm not one to say please subscribe, but seriously, please subscribe to Thread Thrasher. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. 
Um, I'll try and keep you guys as up to speed as I can with everything going on. But, like, um, we're getting there. Also, um, big thank you to everyone that bought the 3D printed models. Um, honestly, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really is. Um, also, also, I got myself a part-time job for today, so... <laughs> Uh, that's nice. So I'm, I'll, you know, what I mean, um, everything's going pretty good. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's just a bit shit, if I be honest with you. But everything's working out pretty nicely, and I really hope you guys enjoy the new style, the new format. Um, I think it's pretty good. I need to work out how to do it completely. Like you know, there's still a lot I could do better and improve on. But like, it's a new style, and uh, there's going to be trial and error with anything you do like that. So like, um. Yeah, I think that's everything. So, look, as I say, I'm going to love you and leave you. Hope you guys enjoy. And definitely go ahead and check out Thread Thrasher. I'm sure none of you want to hear me ranting on. Mm -hmm.